Trader, trade, trader, Cobb Crypto Podcast. Podcast. This is the Trader Cobb Crypto Podcast. G'day guys and welcome to the Trader Cobb Crypto Show. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Now guys, I get asked a question all the time. I mean, I get asked lots of questions about trading. I get asked lots of questions about crypto. I get asked lots of questions about the market. I get asked lots of questions about being an entrepreneur and starting a business. Bottom line is I get asked lots of questions because I am in a position where I speak you know, speak to a lot of people. So the good thing is, is that with these questions comes an answer, and often it's a repeated answer. Now, often the same question comes time and time again, and obviously, the more time that you answer the question, the more detail you get to, and then all of a sudden you become better and better and better at answering the question. People still ask the same questions, of course, because a different person has that same question at different moment in their life or in their journey when it comes to trading, entrepreneurship, or starting a business. Now, one thing that I want to bring up today is your worst case scenario because I think a lot of people fail to think about that and especially in the, this cryptocurrency market it's insane it's off the chain it's wild we love it that's why we're here and if you're not here well we need to discuss that too but more importantly the question is what's your worst case scenario I see people missing this all the time what do I mean by that I see people thinking about the best case scenario or oh, this is gonna do a 10x a 20x a 100x but they don't think about the downside they don't think about the risks associated with this. And what this does, I mean, look, oh, money's money. Money, you can always make more money, all right? You can always make more money. You've got to keep your head in the right space. You've got to keep calm. And you've got to enjoy your life. You've only got one of them. And for those of you that are, say, that are trying to make all the money in the world right now to, and sacrificing their life to make money, for then hopefully down the track, you can sacrifice your time and you get it back. So you can sacrifice making money to give it get your time back. I understand that. Like I've got a similar type of plan, but I'm enjoying the journey along the way. You got to find a way that you can do what you want. You can grow as a person or as a business or as a trader or as whatever it is that you're trying to achieve without suffering too much right now. And this is where they're considering the worst case scenario lies. Put it this way. Yesterday, I got asked, should I be a full-time trader? The answer is, I don't bloody well know. It's up to you as an individual. People often ask as well, you know, at what stage should I be a full-time trader? When can I be good enough to be a full-time trader? These are all questions that are valid, but I can't answer them. There is literally no way for me to answer how good you're going to be as a trader. I mean, how on earth would I know how you're going to be? I've not met you. I don't know you. Even if I do know you, what's your level of commitment? Where are your skill sets? What, like, Where's your drive? What's the motivation behind you becoming a good trader? So there's a lot of different things that you need to consider. The worst case scenario is the first. So the person said, look, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of becoming a full-time trader. You know, should I do it? As I do with everybody that asks me that question, I say, look, make it as easy as possible. So what I did, and I can only ever speak from my own experience, what I did was this. As soon as I got to a point where my trading income was equal to my working income, that means that I could stop working and I could just trade and I'd still make the same amount of money. At that point, I made a decision. Do I hate my job enough to walk away? Do I think I can make more money from trading if I was to walk away? And psychologically, would I be a happier person? Now, I stuck around my job for an extra, I think it was six months I stuck around because I had that beautiful feeling of, I don't have to be here, therefore I am in control. Now for me, it was having the freedom to do what I wanted, i.e. if they pissed me off enough today, I could just walk and I knew I'd be fine. They had nothing over me, they had nothing to say, well, we won't pay you, and I said, well, I don't need you to pay me, I pay myself. I had that beautiful feeling of absolute freedom to do as I chose. Now having that feeling of freedom kept me in that job for longer than I may have. It was important. It was a huge one for me, really, really big indeed. What's your worst case scenario? Well, in my case, my worst case scenario was, okay, well, if I get fired or if I walk out, I've still got the income. So just jumping into trading without having done it before and going full time is fraught with danger. It really, really is. It's a dangerous thing to do because, you know, you haven't proven yourself yet. Typically, you've got to wait until you've got some good, consistent returns. Now, you know, for me in traditional markets, I need at least 12 months of consistency at least, and that 12 months needed to earn me a nice steady income. I'm not talking about doing 80% in one month and then you know 5% in the next two and then flat the rest of it. That's not consistent because that can still be turkey and hurricane stuff, that is. 
I needed to show that I could manage my risk, trade well, and consistently make money as a trader. Now, in cryptocurrency, we know it's a different market. It moves faster, so the time frame can be shorter. But the psychological challenges that come with a fast-moving market we have in crypto are also compounded. You can make money very, very fast if you're good, and you can lose money very, very fast if you're not. So a couple of things that you need to consider here is, A, what level of understanding do you have for these markets? Do you have a level of training and ability behind you that's backed by years and years and years of experience? Or are you just going to sort of have a go and hope? Do you have somebody there who's showing you day in and day out what they're doing to help you to understand what's going on and to keep your finger on the pulse? Are you plugged into somebody that you know and respect and know is a good trader? for your psyche, for your headspace, to continually have little lessons every single day, little things to keep you on that path. Because trading can get very, very lonely. That's another one you've got to think about. Something else to consider is what is the absolute worst case scenario? Okay, so picture this. You've got, say, $50,000 in a trading account. I just chose that number randomly. If you want to trade full time, um, you know, it might not be just you've got trading 50000 in your trading account. It might be that you've got 50000 in saving and you're going to trade with, say, 20 of that and you're going to have 30 for your bills and la, la, la. H however it plays out, what is the worst case scenario? Do you have, you know, a couple of kids and a wife and you're the sole income earner, wife or husband or whatever, right? Are you the sole income owner and therefore if you were to lose your income, what would be the worst case scenario? Have you got a job that you can walk straight back into if you need to? Have you got a secondary source of income that you can walk straight back into? Is your partner going to go back to work so that you can go ahead and push forward to learn how to become this trader that you desire to be? What is your worst case scenario? Are you going to end up on the street? Are you going to just you know, have to buy less cool shoes, less holidays? What sacrifices are you going to make? Because it's not just a rosy picture that we've got to paint, guys. It's a realistic one. Trading is difficult. Having a good education and a good base to start from is going to help you in a big way. That's why the live trading floor is a big one, guys. People get to see my five-day-a-week top 100 scan. It helps them in a big way. Now, I'm not suggesting you have to do that. Not at all. But I'm suggesting that you've got to have something. You know, you've got to know what's going on. You've, you've got to feel like you... Under, well, not just feel like... You've got to understand and have that backup proof, either on your own trading results or on somebody else's because it's going to get hard at some point. It may not get hard from the very beginning. It may get hard later on down the track, but it will get hard. Is your worst case scenario going to be so devastating that as you approach that, or even the thought of your worst case scenario will send your head into a spin? Because if that's the case, you shouldn't be going full time right now. The reason being, your headspace is everything as a trader. Guys, I've been technical trading for 11 years, and for the last sort of six or seven, I've been very good at it. I'm not investing my money or time into understanding charts more as in, you know, courses and education in that space, no. But I tell you what, I do work very hard on my headspace. I have Bowen therapy once a week, sorry, every, every fortnight. I see a therapist the next week. Not because I've got major issues, and if you do have major that's not a problem either, but because I want to keep myself on that same plane, okay? I need to keep my head in the right space because my head is everything. If I lose my headspace, if I go from being the normal me to being either over the top happy or, I mean, that's, that's all right because you can control that. It's fine. Or depressed or, or any sort of mood that can take me away from being the best version of myself possible when I'm trading, then that's going to cost me money. Now, I see my headspace and my body and my entire person as a business, whether it be running the business side of it or whether it be placing the trades, whether it be taking the screenshots. It's all requiring me to be absolutely on the top of my game so have measures in place the only way you can have measures in place is by understanding your bottom line your worst case scenario so guys i want to leave you with that because it's so goddamn important that you think this through if you are going to take those steps then you need to understand your worst case and if you're considering doing it in the future you might have a 12 month goal then think about the worst case scenario that might be in 12 months and then work hard to beat that Work hard that if you're looking to be a full-time trader in 12 months, you do the right things for the next 12 months so that your worst case scenario isn't actually as bad as what you want, might have planned it to be now. It's all up to you guys. You're the only one that can do this and I wish you the best in your journey. If I can help in any way, I'd absolutely love to. Go to tradercob.com. I'll see you there. Bye for now. The Trader Cobb Crypto Podcast. Check out tradercob.com because experience matters. 